Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. How you doing? That's right. We on. We on. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We are on. We at it again. Let me fix this. Let me fix everything. Make sure everything is all right. We are on. We at it again. Tell somebody to tell somebody to tell somebody. Oh, my goodness, girl. He on. He on crazy. Pass on. Click like and share this video. He on crazy. on pass on, girl. Let, let go see what he had to say tonight. Oh, man. He on. Oh, man. He on. Praise God uh, for that. Watch this. Um. This God is awesome. He's a he's a wonderful God. He's just a miracle. He's a way maker. You know, you know, he's a way maker, and there's no doubt about that. Bless the name of the Lord. Um, I thank God for this morning. Uh, I'm sorry for this evening. This morning too, though. I ain't slip up. This morning too, because this morning is just it just starts off good, you know. And the, and, the, and the day has been long. It's been enduring. Amen. But. Uh, we are here. Click like and share this video. Tell somebody to tell somebody. Break and change ministries. Bible study is on. We are in the building. Let's get ready. Prepare your Bibles. Go to Ephesians chapter 5. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5. Let's get it. Let's get it. Ephesians chapter 5. Praise God for that. God is awesome. He is doing wonderful things, miraculous things. Amen. We are excited. Let's do this. Watch this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Uh-huh. Have to make sure everything is all right. You know how it is when we live transparent. You know, we just got to let it all happen. Amen. So, you know, the Apostle Paul is saying some amazing things. We will have prayer before uh, we begin. But the Apostle Paul is saying some amazing things to the believers. He's like, listen, we got to support one another. We got to love one another. We got to deal with one another uh, with love and, and understand that you, you have to love and you have to deal with kindness and you have to operate in good faith, uh, amen, because of what was done for you. Uh, Paul is telling the believers at Ephesus that you were once uh, outcast and amen, and, and you, were in the, you were on the wrong side of the tracks. Uh, so before you criticize and mock one another and hate one another, realize uh, that you were uh, given another chance, you were forgiven, amen, and and because you were, you were forgiven and because of what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross, you have to extend that same uh, 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 wonderfulness, that same salvation, that same forgi uh, for, uh, forgivefulness. Uh, uh, you have to extend that same love that was given unto you. And, and so uh, in, in chapter 5, Paul is continuing in that. He's telling the believers that they have to be careful how they deal with one another and others. Uh, but most of all, uh, it is important that they... That they, that they do the will of God because they were given an opportunity. When they heard the gospel, it saved them. But the only reason why they were able to hear the gospel is because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross for them. Amen. Come on, somebody hear me. And so and so Paul is now continuing that journey uh, in chapter 5. At the, end of, in, at the end of chapter 4, you know, uh, he says... Uh, right at 29, he says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good. Um, and he says, uh, to the use of edifying that any minister grace unto the hearers. That's verse 29. And, 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 and I'm touching on specifically that verse at the end of four is because that is what five is beginning to pick back up on. Okay, because at 29, watch this, from 29 to like 32, what he says is he says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying that many that that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So whatever you let come out of your mouth should be good that the people that hear it can accept it and 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 and, and meditate on it and love on it because it's for the better of them. So let it always be good. Whatever come out your mouth, let it be good. Let it be positive, for it is of edification to the ones that are hearing. They shouldn't be hearing anything that's not right. They shouldn't be hearing uh, foul language. They shouldn't be hearing. Uh, you gossiping about another saint. Uh-oh, I didn't, I didn't oh, I'm just getting started already. They shouldn't be hearing about you criticizing the pastor because you don't think he taking the money and they shouldn't be hearing that, all right? And they shouldn't be hearing you talk about another person of the church because it makes them feel unwelcome and, and makes them feel like, well if, well, if I'm not around them, what they saying, you, you know what I'm saying? And let's just keep it real. We're going to pray now, y'all. You know? But if we start this thing off right. And then after that, uh, he says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby you are sealed into the day of redemption. He says that in 30, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, 31, he says, and then he says, he makes it clear. He says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and even speak and evil speak and be put away from you with all malice. Amen. And then he says in 32, and be ye kind to one another, 
All right, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as uh, God, for Christ's sake, have forgiven you. So because of what Christ did for you, God forgave what he did. He, he got it enabled God to forgive you. So be, so if you were forgiven, you ought to extend that same uh, 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 stature or position to somebody else, even when they make you mad. Come on, somebody hear me, hear me out now. We're going to get somewhere with this now. And so five is about to extend, is about to extend on what verse 29 is talking about. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Five is about to go uh, further into that a little bit more. Amen. Because Paul continues uh, in, in verses uh, in, in chapter five, verses one through 21, he, Paul continues to instruct his readers or, or the believers who he wrote to, of course, in Ephesus, those are his readers and us, uh, in, in, to live life in ways that pleases God only. All right. Reflecting his light into the world. So live in a way that pleases God, because when you live in a way that pleases God, what it does is it automatically reflects, uh, the light unto God of God the light of God unto the world. That's what I meant to say. That's what it reflects the light of God into the world. So, so when you, when you uh, uh, live in a life that's pleasing to God, you are reflecting God to the kingdom, to his kingdom work, to the people that are believers and non-believers. Amen. And so this is what he's talking about. So let us pray really quick. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. Uh, those that have eyes to see, let them see, ears to hear, God. And those that don't understand, give them an understanding for that you are author and finisher of the word. Uh, touch every marriage, every relationship, God, every circumstance. Those that are sick, the, the, the brothers with the brothers, the sisters with the sisters, the sisters and brothers that haven't talked for a while, oh God. Uh, just touch on them, God. Let's, let's, let's get the family atmosphere back together, God, both in the church and in the physical family uh, of the bloodline, God. Too many people are not talking and falling apart. And then when they hear about somebody dying, somebody crying. Oh, my goodness. But we want to make it right in the name of Jesus, God. Let forgiveness uh, pour throughout uh, 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 the, the, the church community and the regular communities, God. Let, let all the strife and everything that has taken past, God, uh, uh, be forgiven. And let us get our hearts right because... Uh, we are living in some trouble sometimes and let your word be edification unto us and build us and strengthen our spirits. For your word says in Matthew 4 and 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, as we study Ephesians 5. Uh, watch this here. Now at Break and Change Ministries, you know the motto, uh, we believe in the word of God and that the word of God is true. We believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and that he died for me and you. And we believe that he is the way, the truth in the light. And we believe in the word of God. And we know that it is right. You know where we stand at it. We, we believe every bit of the Bible. Uh, we don't care nothing about no manuscripts that may have been rewritten three, four times by the scribes. And uh, we didn't, the, the book didn't make it to the Bible. We, we going off the word of God. We going from Genesis all the way to Revelations. If it's in the Bible, God wanted it to be there. He's the author and finisher whatever the inspiration that he gave, we stick to that. We believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. He died on the cross and on the third day rose again. And that is the reason why my sin and self, uh, uh, my outcast self that once was not a believer can preach the gospel unto you. It's just that simple. All right. Amen. So listen, listen, Linda and Lonnie too. <laughs> listen, Linda and Lonnie, whoever we, we about to get into this. All right. Stick with me. Look, I'm going to read the first 10 verses and then I'm going to break it. I'm going to proceed to break it down. Listen, he says here in Ephesians chapter five, if you turn your Bibles there, be ready. Click like and share this video. Somebody needs to hear this. It's going to be good. He says, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ has also loved us. There we go. And have given himself for us an offering to the sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savior. Now, savor. now, now he's, he, he's, he's speaking about a, a Old Testament uh, uh, um, a tradition there. And uh, he says, but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting which are not convenient, but rather giving thanks. Uh, five, he says, for this ye know, he about to get deep, that no whoremonger, no unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of God, 
Let no man deceive you. This is important, everybody. No, no, come on now. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things come up the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. <clears throat> Seven says, be ye not therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is, on, is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Ten says, providing what is acceptable unto the Lord. So we're going to stop right there. Chapter 5, verse 1, he says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. So we are made in the image of God. The Bible teaches us that. And when you look into the book of Genesis, the Bible says that, you know, God created the heavens and the earth. And then it says then after that, he created man. He formed man out of the dirt. And then he said, man should not be alone. And he made one man. And he took the rib of the man and he created one man. And so we're made in his image. All right. And, 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 and we are made like him for he created us in his image, the Bible says. And so he could be, but regardless of what image we are in, he created us, right? And because he, uh, he created us, we should represent him. And so Paul is saying right off the beginning, because of that very theory, represent him. He says, be ye followers of God as dear children. All right. What do children do? Right off the bat, children learn things how? Oh, I'm about to help somebody already. This ain't even really in the in the text, but it's got something to do with the text. Children, they 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 learn how. They learn through the parents. They do they mimic the parents. If you're polite and you're kind to people, your child will learn to be combined, uh, kind. If you're loud, ratchet, and too ghetto and act like you don't have no sense and can't nobody take you into the public, and if you speak to them in a manner, well, all you do is criticize and cuss them out because you're mad at, oh my goodness, let me quit. You have to be careful. If you're mad at your sister and you're cussing her out and you act like the two-year-old can't pick up the senses, you're crazy because as soon as you get to talking to them right around four and five and you ask them a question or they bump their toe or they hit something and they say S.A. H-I, you shouldn't be mad because the children learn from the parent. They mimic the parent. This is the point that I'm making here. Come on, somebody. Stay up with me now. I'm getting, I'm, listen, we going somewhere. So what Paul is saying, be ye followers, uh, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. What he's saying is, I want you to imitate God. I want you to be imitators of God. Paul is commanding, not suggesting. He is commanding that believers Im imitate God on how they treat one another. This ought to be kind. This ought to be ought to be good. And then he says, "Do it as children." This this alludes that believers are are are, are these these new believers in Ephesus are, are are adopted into the family because they were once non-believers, but now they are believers, which makes them children of God. And so Paul is saying, "Follow, follow God like you are His children. Mimic God. God loves. Uh, uh, God forgives. God God." God uh, extends his hand. God don't hold grudges. Come on now. And, and, and so you have to imitate God by following his word that you have been taught. And do what his word says like you've been taught it. And once again, he what he's talking about is loving one another. Be careful how you talk and bring forth the word of God. And let the word of God be your only means of communication. Don't don't get all off into other stuff. Just just hallelujah. This is what he's talking about. Now, I ain't making this up. Careful what you're saying. People are watching. Operate as children. Children mimic the parent. And if your and if your parent who who you are to imitate is good, then you ought to be acting like you come from somebody that's good. All right, all right, all right. And then he says, he says, and this is how you do it. If you don't understand it, I'll help you. He says, walk in love as Christ has also loved us and hath given himself for an offering and a sacrifice for a sweet smelling savior. So he says, listen, he says, and, and I want you, he says, I want you to, 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 to walk and live. He says, follow after God, imitate God and act like you, his children and God is love. And so the number one thing you can do to imitate God is walk in love. And then he gives an example of that love. He says, not only do I want you to walk in love, but an example of that love or the example of the type of love you should be walking in is the type of love Christ himself gave when he laid down his life for the sacrifice of your sins. And he laid down his life that you may be, that you may be 
considered not only safe, but in the family of God. And he did that out of love because he loved God and wanted to do God's will. And God wanted a, 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 a way for you to be saved because we are his children and we fell off from the wayside due to our lineage and heritage and our own bad behavior. And so God extended love, gave his son as a sacrifice and his son loved him. So his son did what the father wanted, died on the cross. And from that you are saved. And it all happened out of love. So if it happened out of love for you, you ought to be walking around talking like you love somebody. Is this Bible study or do they got me preaching? Calm down. I got to calm down. I got to calm down. Give me a minute. Paul is saying, live, my gosh, in love. He, what, he, what he does is he, he, he put, like I said, he, he, he provides a model of love through Christ. Of how Christians are to live in love. His, his, his sacrifice in the death on the cross was a pure definition of what love is like. I already broke that down to y'all. And Paul is saying, you got to have that kind of love. So ain't no, oh, I just love you. No, you, you love them enough to the point where you will go far. See, this may be hard sometimes, don't get me wrong, but you got to love them enough to where you will go out on a far, far limb for them. That's way beyond just you telling them you love them. See, don't talk about it, be about it. And then, and then Paul says, Paul says, he says, he says, he says, and, uh, who, uh, 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 walk in love as Christ have loved us and have given himself for an offering and a sacrifice unto God for a sweet, sweet uh, smelling uh, Savior. Let me tell you where that comes from. The offering and the sacrifice description, it, 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 is the, it is the description of Christ's death that draws on the language from the sacrificial system in the Old Testament. So, so when they did sacrifices, whenever someone sinned in Israel, or or they had a, a sacrificial offering that they wanted to give the four, first fruits, one of the one of the uh, instructions would be to bring bring an animal, uh, mostly known as a lamb or a calf, and they had to be without blemish, and pure white, uh, 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 never never you know like uh, let's just say you know. Uh, an animal that that never you know been intimate with another animal like a like a virgin and it was clean and it was new and there was no dirt on it and and another thing about the animal too that the animal couldn't have like a broken leg or or a broken neck that's been healed it just had to be clean without blemish and it had to be an animal that could give you the ability to reproduce other animals whether it's male or female it had to be an animal that was so good that if it was to mate with another animal, it would give you good stock or good offspring. Uh, but you didn't do that with this animal. You just kept the animal pure and clean and you gave it a sacrifice. And the Bible says that when you did that, you sacrificed and you gave the sacrifice unto God. And because it was unto God, the, there's there's a description that God, uh, uh, that the fragrance would go up into the heavens and God would, uh, so to say, smell it. And, 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 and it would please him because God seen that you was giving giving him your best of the best. So this Old Testament analogy where he's talking about a sacrifice, he's saying that he's saying that when Jesus Christ died on the cross and he did it out of love, that, that it was a that it was a it, it was a situation or it was an ultimate sacrifice that pleased God like something that you smell. You know how you walk in the kitchen and you know some cookies being baked. You know when that that, that cake is being baked, or you know when that good old hot water cone bread is being made. You know what I'm saying? Some of that jiffy lube. Come on, y'all. And you can smell it. Okay. And it's pleasing to you. So there, so he's saying that Jesus Christ's death on the cross was, was, was a sacrifice that was better than all sacrifices because it pleased God in a way. It pleased God so good. It's like he, it's like a sweet smelling savior. So come on now. Come on. That's what he's talking about. He says, he says, so walk in love as Christ have loved us. That's how you're supposed to be loving one another. He gave himself up for, for us and he, he did it as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savior. So this, his sacrifice pleased God. So your actions and your ways and the way you operate out of love ought to be pleasing God too. I hope y'all got that now. I hope y'all got that. And then he says, and then he says, and I'm going to show you how you can not only uh, 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 be ye followers of God like children, and he says, and the way you can do it is to walk in love, and the love has to be so great, like like Christ. He's not necessarily asking you to die for one another, but he's asking like he's he's asking you to deal with one another uh, with the intent that if it really came down to it, you 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 would you would die, because you got that kind of love, all right. And he says, and do it like 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 Christ was an ultimate sacrifice, and it was pleasing unto God. That's what he said. He says Christ operated in a way where he pleased God and you ought to do the same. And he says, and, and this is how you can stay in that way. This is how you can continue to operate in love. This is how you can continue to please God. Look what three says. He says, but fornication, 
but fornication, that means don't don't just be going around just sleeping with one another. If you ain't married to one another, he says, but fornication and all cleanness or, covet, or uh, covetness, let it not be once named among you as become a saint. So he's saying any kind of sexual immorality, okay? Being intimate, not being married. I'm just going to put it out there because it is what it is. Woman with woman. Man with man. Man with woman, unmarried. Uh, sleeping with animals. Bestiality. Because you have to understand, we're talking about, look at the time that we're talking about. At the time of Ephesus, this is what was happening. Then if you look at the, at the, at the, at the time of Ephesus, one thing that Ephesus had very bad, Ephes, Ephesians and Rome, was they had a very huge habit, uh, 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 and it was an outpouring habit, like it was a well-known habit, they would serve idols. And they would make sacrifices such as their children, uh, ha being intimate with animals, uh, letting animals come unto them and them going unto animals, uh, you know, men with men, women with women. This was in that time too. It's nothing new today um, and things of that nature. And so Paul had to put it out there. You know, you, you are believers. So everything that's going on in the world, you're not a part of. Okay. And he made it clear fornication, all uncleanness. Uh, uh, that, that means that, uh, you know, you, you, you drinking too much wine when you can't even handle your alcohol and you out there literally pissing in the streets. And, and I'm just telling it like it is because again this was happening you know they were all on the sidewalk and they had accumulated too much drink and people put it out pulling out their private parts peeing all on the street and 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 uh and they and they and they raveling and cussing each other out um yeah you wouldn't necessarily be called a bar fight but people was in the street fighting one another from from drunkenness and trying to kill one another somebody pulling out a javelin at that time known as a knife kill you know because they drunk Somebody stepped on the white Air Force Ones or the white sandals and now they're fighting. And for real, this was happening. I'm not trying to be funny. And so Paul is talking about this. All uncleanness or covetness. That means you got people who get so jealous that they start to hawk down something else somebody got and they begin to covet it. And they and, they, and so and so they they are they are, 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 are plotting and scheming to take what they got, whether it's their girl or their household or their livestock. So now they're plotting to take it from them. So they're about to rob them or they're about to kill them. Because they're, they're, they're covenanting uh, what they see. Paul says, this is not you. All right? He says, let it not be named among you. He says, you are saints of God. None of that stuff should be named among them. Nobody should be talking about nobody sleeping with nobody and doing nothing that is impure because you are new believers. You are saints. You are children of God. You're walking in love. And if you're walking in love, this stuff ought not to be happening. So he says, so. But for fornication, uncleanness, covetousness, let it not be named among you as become a saint. So when you become a saint, you're, you're departing from this. Then he says, look, then he says, uh, neither filthiness. So he's talking about, he. So, so what he did was he went to the harsh, harsh part first. You know, fornicating and covetousness and all uncleanness. He went to the hard part first. But he says, well, wait a minute, though. He says, now, I talked about that. Don't do that because you saints. He said, but also... Watch this now, because this is where we get messed up. He says, but neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving thanks to one another. Now, here's what I'm trying to tell you. He is saying to the, to, to the believers here, don't let um filthiness, right? So when you hear it, you're thinking about, you know, uh, 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 somebody just cussing. But Paul is saying, you know, no bad knock-knock jokes. No bad gestures. No talking about nobody's mamas. Nobody, no, none of that, none of that. When, 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 when another man's wife walked past you operating with believers and you talking about how, you know what I'm saying, if, if that man's wife will let you give one night. Or you telling this other man and this woman, ooh, I get with that just one time. And uh, ooh, he lucky. I beat that up. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, I, I do this. Like, we just going to keep it transparent and real here. Now, click like and shut. Somebody need to hear this. Paul is saying that when, when you with a group of people, you ain't eyeing old girl, old dude's wife, talking about how you would, what you would do to her. Crude humor. You, you being funny, but it's not proper. 
So Paul is saying, don't let that, 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 that filthiness nor that foolish talking. That foolish talk, he even talking about this. Oh, man, you you ugly. Nigga, I know I'm ugly, but at least I got up off your mama. I mean, he's taking it there. He says, nor jesting. All right? Nor jesting. That's that same thing. Cruel humor. That, 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 that no good humor. Woo-wee, boy. Woo-wee. Yeah, yeah. Try me then. Pull up, boy. Yeah, you talking crazy. Y'all got y'all funny, but I bet you can't nobody beat me. You know, I'll be, I be the brother down. And did, 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 did. This is what he's talking about. I'm not making this up. All right? And he says, he says, nor gesture. He says, you know why? Because none of that is convenient. And the reason why Paul is talking about that, because again, he says, you're supposed to be operating in love. You're supposed to be uh, 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 walking as children of God. And he's saying that you got to be careful because people are watching you. And he says, you have to be operating with love. And he says, and when you're acting like this fool, foolish gesturing, covetousness, and, and, and foolish talking and jesting, he says, the reason why that's not convenient is because you can be bringing somebody's faith down. If they're believers or they're new in Christ and they walk past and hear you talking like that and you're supposed to represent the church, they're going to be afraid to come to that church, especially if it's a woman with a husband and especially if it's a man with a wife. If he listening to you talking about when a girl walk past how you will beat it up and he know he got a whole family and he a new believer and he want to come to the church of Ephesus and you represent the church of Ephesus and you talking like that, he ain't going to want to bring his girl there because he know you're going to be eyeing him. And probably be plotting to kill him because you're full of covetousness. So Paul is saying, let that be from among you because it's not convenient. He says, not only is it not convenient, he said, the only thing you need to do is be operating out of love and giving thanks to one another and God. He says, you don't need to be doing all of that cruel talking and talking crazy. He said, the only thing you need to do is be worshiping God, operating his, 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 his kingdom and giving thanks. Being thankful what was been done for you. Being thankful that you got another chance. Being thankful that you, that you, that, that you came out of your mess. Being thankful that God ain't still uh, condemning you to hell and he gave you another chance and Christ died. Being thankful. That's the only thing you need to be doing is giving thanks. Watch this. He says in five, he says, because when you operating in love, putting all that mess for, for, from among you, this this is how you know you safe. Paul says another reason why you don't want to be, he's, he's about to go into five and five is about to tell you why you don't want to be having fornication among you. Why you don't want to have uncleanness among you. Why you don't want to be combating. Why you don't want to have foolish talking. Why you don't want to have foolish gesturing. Why it's not convenient. He's about to break it down. He's saying because when you do these things, you don't operate as saints. You operate as the rest of the world. And here's what the rest of the world is. And this is what it gets you. Watch this. For this, you know. For this, you know. He says, because if you do these things, know this. He says, for this, you know. That no whoremonger. That means a, pro a person who's got a real bad problem with fornication. Not only are they uh, uh, sleeping with somebody that they're not married to or sleeping with any, you know, but a homemonger is not only uh, sleeping with somebody they're not married to, they're sleeping with everybody. Everybody, a man or woman. No whoremonger, no unclean person. You, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, no, no covetous man. When he say man, he's talking about women too. Who is an idolater, who worship his idols. Have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. He says, this is why you don't want to do it. He says, because not only are you a saint, not only are you supposed to be operating in love, but not only are you supposed to be operating in a way like Christ, uh, that represents what Christ did on the cro cross for you, he says, that is not convenient. It hinders you. And, and he's going to talk about that in a, in a couple more verses. It hinders you. He says, and you represent like those that are in the rest of the world. And I'm going to tell you what's in the rest of the world. Whoremongers, unclean people, covetous people, people who worship idols. That means you worship other things outside of God. And he says, listen, and none of them has any inheritance coming to them in the kingdom of God and Christ. He says, so you, that's why you don't want to be a part of it because it's not convenient. It can hinder other people, but most of all, it hinders you because when you act like that, then you putting yourself not as the saint or representation of the kingdom. You acting like the rest of the world. And if you're going to act like the rest of the world, then you're going to be considered what the rest of the world is. A homemonger. Forget fornication. You're going you're gonna to be considered a whoremonger or a hoe. It's just, let's just put it out there. I ain't trying to cuss. I'm trying to tell you how it's seen in this day and age and this day and age. In the day and age of Ephesus and in the day and age of that, you're going to be considered whoremonger. You're going to be considered unclean. Literally probably walking around with some kind of disease. Literally. Or considered unclean because your, your body is defiled. Okay, your, your, your body is defiled, 
then you're going to always be lusting or coveting. And love, lusting don't necessarily have anything to just do with sex. It's, it's, it's always yearning, wanting somebody else's stuff and, and, and idolatry. That means worshiping anything that's not of God only, include money too much. He says, none of these things, none of these people have any inheritance in the kingdom of God. That means you will not be living with God. That means you will not be entering in the kingdom of heaven because everything else is too important to you. While and out, party, popping pills, sleeping with who, whenever, whenever, however, whenever you can. Trying to get the next hit, trying to get the next drink, trying to see where the next party is at. Forget about the inheritance of the kingdom. This is, this, is, this is what Paul is saying now. Look here now. Stay with me. Look here now. And then he says here, he says, he says, he says, have any inheritance in the kingdom of God? He says, and then I want you to do something else. He says, now, when you get all of that lined up, he says, you don't want to do the things of the world because it'll hinder you. He says, here's another thing you got to watch out for, uh, dear believers. He says, let no man deceive you with vain words. This is, this is verse 6. For because of these things come of the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. So vain words at this time and what he's talking about is words or, or language that, that has emptiness. And what it means by emptiness is it has no justification of the representation of God. Okay, so... So it's not about God's business. It's not about uh, uh, God's desires. It's not about God's will. It's, it's, it's one of those things that we're dealing with. I'm going to help somebody. It's one of those things where somebody is coming along, and, 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 and I'm not trying to just go into the Islamic, but uh, they're, they're trying to tell you, you know, why believe in the uh, white man's religion, uh, uh, Elijah Muhammad, uh, who's no longer alive, um, is the savior of the world. And you don't have to worry about, you know, cussing and, and drinking and smoking weed. Long as you do right by people. Long as you be nice by people. Long as you be nice to people, man, you a good person. You can still act a fool there now and then. It, it's all right. You 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 punched the old boy and jumped on him because he's because he because he talked crazy to you and and cussed your girl out, but you know what I'm saying. You, it's all right. You you had to do what you had to do. It is what it is. That's a man. Because if you because if you didn't do nothing, you know, then everybody gonna think you ain't a man, and then everybody gonna be trying to punk you. I'm using those examples because I'm trying to figure out where God where's God at in it. And anything that is not of God, it's empty. And Paul is, is saying to you, don't let a man deceive you with vain words, empty words, likely referring to a, a, a man's attempt to, 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 to trivialize or justify illicit behavior. So, so people to tell you that, you know, it's all right to do this because, you know, you know, he, 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 he walked past you and called you a bee. So you can't let him treat you like a punk because if you let them treat you like a punk you gotta handle your business because if you if you if you let them just pass by you know what i'm saying everybody be trying to talk about you and, and everybody be trying to bully you you can't have that let's show them you a man what god represented in that you can let people call you what you want matter of fact some of our ancestors and forefathers some of our grandmothers and grandfathers can be good lessons for that because they was down south being called niggas and you know what they was doing Turning the other cheek because they knew who they were. And most of all, they were thinking of your parents who, who, who had to think about you. They were living their lives so they could take care of their kids. So their kids can have kids and their kids can be parents to you. But somebody who's giving you vain words be like, you don't let nobody talk to you any old kind of way. No, I'm not saying do that. But I am saying you don't have to do something because somebody did something. You don't have to prove a point. Because if it's not representing God, you don't want no parts of it. Somebody called you out your name? Okay, I'm praying for you. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. They come put their hands on you and try to harm you and your family? That's kind of a horse of another color. And I won't get too in-depth into that because I'm not going to advise you to do anything. But it's understandable. But if they're just hitting you with some words, you don't have to prove a point because somebody's hitting you with some words. Look at the stuff that they did to Jesus. Matter of fact, they smacked him and spit in his face and he still did nothing. 
But I'm just not gonna act like that's not kind of hard. Cause that'll me be that'll be me being a hypocrite. Cause I, I'm not gonna sit up here and say you know. Cause if somebody touch me and put their hands on me and touch my kids, I'm gonna turn on the other cheek. I'm supposed to lies. Oh, I'm supposed to. But y'all know I'm transparent. I'm gonna keep it 100% real. If I gotta tell them myself, you, you, you touch my kids, anybody in my family, and you know me, I. I you know, give me somebody, give me a uh, calm me down pill right now because I'm liable to turn up. And it's not good because Paul is saying, let that be far from you. Yeah, Pastor, but don't you think that's contradicting though? Ooh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. But I'm not going to sit up here and try to fake the phone. But besides the violence, Paul is saying, and, 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 this, and, and it's good that I went there because. Six is also clear. Verse six is also so clear. Let no man deceive you with vain words. He doesn't talk about violence. I'm just, just keeping it 100 talking about the violence, but he's saying, don't let nobody just come tell you whatever, 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 and some vain words. And don't let them uh, uh, justify bad behavior because if the behavior is not representing God, it's bad. And he's saying, and the reason why, he says, because if you let somebody deceive you with vain words, he says, what you're going to have to deal with if you do the things that are opposite of God, is you're going to have to deal with the wrath of God. So if you do the things that, that are opposite of God and you let some man justify their bad behavior and your bad behavior like it's okay, then you're going to keep not being okay. You're going to be on the path of, of, of no good and then you're going to receive the wrath of God. And that ain't necessarily when he come back for the kingdom of, and, and get all his people. It's even while you operate on earth. You, you out here doing any old kind of way, all kind of wrong, any old time, any old kind of way. God going to deal with you. I'm, I'm just telling you, don't, 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 don't be surprised when you walk around here thinking you're doing what you want to do, getting away with bloody murder, treating people wrong and, 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 and scamming people. And you go get a new ride and all of a sudden you come out and, you're, and your car ain't starting and you go, you take it to the shop and find out it's the whole transmission. I'm just saying. All right, all right, all right. He says, for the wrath of God come upon the children of disobedience. Look what he says in seven. Be ye not therefore partakers with them. He says, don't, 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 don't have no affiliation with these kind of people. Don't have no affiliation with the type of people who are whoremonging, unclean, covetous, they idolaters, they idolaters, they're not going to have no inheritance. He says, don't be chilling with people that's using empty speeches and sayings and telling you, you know, that, yeah, you, that you a Hebrew Israelite. And, and, and I believe all that to be true, but Jesus Christ is definitely not the Messiah. Why would you want to follow the white man when, when, when they got to realize he was a Hebrew uh, you know, and he, he was a, he was a, he was a dark colored man, but they trying to tell you something different. And when they, if they, if they, not, they're not going to tell you or help you understand that Jesus was more black than he was white, even though the pictures that are painted show that he's white. Come on, somebody is, 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 oh, we ain't going to get that deep. Stay with me. Paul is saying, be ye not therefore partakers with these kind of people, period. Don't be hanging out in the bars with them. Don't get drunk with them. Don't turn up with them. Don't talk crazy with them. Don't be talking about who, who, wife, who husband and wife you're going to hit with them and doing all of this because you're going to receive the wrath of God. It ain't good. He says, don't even affiliate with them. Watch this. And Paul says, and you have to remember this. You can't be partakers with them. And then Paul says, I want you to remember something right here in verse eight. He says, for ye were sometime in darkness. But now are ye light in the Lord, walk as children of light. He says, remember now, remember, you know, the realm you used to live in, darkness. Darkness represents the realm of Satan, sin and death. And, 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 and let me tell you something else about darkness that, he, that, he, that he's also saying. He's saying darkness represents sin and death, but darkness in this context also means for you were sometime lacking understanding. You were in a position when you were considered sinners, non-believers, on the other side of the tracks, not representing God, and you didn't understand. You were in darkness. Your understanding was dark. And he says, but now uh, am I enlightening you, and now you are children of God, so now I want you to stay enlightened, and I want you to walk like you in the light. The light is the truth. You didn't know the truth, but now you know the truth, and you need to be operating like you know the truth. That's what he means, for you were, so ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of life. You are light. You know the truth. It's a con children of light are a com it's a common label and used in a lot of writers. It is, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is a common uh, phrase because for those who are in right relationship of God, 
are called the children of light or the children of the truth. Uh, 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 when you think about, um, and I won't get too particular, but when you look at the uh, uh, the Kwam Ram co uh, community, uh, 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 and, and, and what it is is it's an, it's an, uh, the Kam the Kwam Ram community is an archaeological site near caves where the dead sea scrolls were were discovered. Uh, this 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 site where the where the, the site where the first dead sea scrolls, which were the scrolls uh, used to uh, copy the Bible scriptures that give us our Bible today, were first discovered, and it was a site that was inhabited in the first century B.C. and the mid first century B.C. And so these were known as the people who discovered these sea, dead sea scrolls back then were known as the the Quamran people or the community. All right, and and the reason why I bring them up is because the the the, the Quamran community would call themselves children of light. Why? Because they now held the truth. They discovered the truth, which was the true word of God. They found the Dead Sea Scrolls. So they hold. They held the truth. They were a community that 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 discovered the truth. So before those words that they found, which was of the Bible, was uh, recopied and put on paper and putting into the printer press, they held the truth. They were the only ones that held the truth. So they would consider themselves children of light. So this children of light was a terminology that was used amongst many writers, including Paul. And he sang, "Be ye not far partakers with them." And he says in eight, "For ye were sometimes in dark." Darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord, walk as children of light. So Paul is using a Old Testament way back in the day terminology, like homeboy, uh, uh, you, the, you the stuff, you the, you the it factor, you the truth boss, you, 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 the, you, the, you the ace coon boom, the HBIC, you know, the head boss in charge, you know. And so he's using a terminology that is old but has a significance. And Paul is saying, just like they discovered the truth and they were the only ones with the truth, you now have the truth. So walk like you are the truth. Walk as the children of light. I'm trying to help y'all understand something here. And then he says you have to, to walk as the children of life because you're operating in the spirit. Look, he, look what he says in 9. He says you, you, you're supposed to walk according to the spirit for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. When you walk, as the, when you walk like you have the truth, you obtain and portray a spirit that operates in truth. You have a spirit within you that was given unto you that, 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 that shows goodness and it shows righteousness. And that righteousness comes from the truth. Walk in the truth. Watch this. 10. 10 says when you're walking in love and dealing with love and keeping all foul language away from yourself and not acting crazy and being crazy in the community and, 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 and doing what everybody else do amongst one another when you hang out. He says in 10... Because when you don't do these things and you do what's right and live for the Lord, you are providing what is acceptable unto the Lord. This is what 10 says. He says you're providing what is acceptable, acceptable unto the Lord. And what Paul is saying in verse 10 is you're giving a glimpse of an example of God. You're giving an example of what God is. You're giving an example of what God looks like. You're providing what is acceptable unto the Lord, and that is you yourself, representation of the kingdom, providing what is acceptable is you providing yourself to be living a life for God, according to the will of God, operating in the kingdom or operating on the behalf of the kingdom like the Lord did, like the Lord Jesus did. You're doing what Jesus did. Operating in love, representing the kingdom. And so you're providing what is acceptable unto the Lord. In other words, you're showing the Lord you are doing what he did. And so your behavior is considered acceptable. That's what, that's what 10 is saying. Now. I'm going through 11, I'm going to do 11 through 20. I'm going to try it, okay? And so, um, 11 says, bear with me, y'all. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Speaks for itself. For it's shame, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Now, that's deep, y'all. Watch this. 13 says, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doeth make manifest is light. 
Watch this. That's deep. Stay with me. I'm going I'm to stop at 15. Wherefore, he said, awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectively, not as fools, but as wise. So 11 is saying here, of course, like I told you, you can't do what the rest of the world do. So Paul says clearly, not only can you not do what the rest of the world do, he says, same thing he said in um 9 and 10, have no fellowship with them at all. Don't even hang with them. He says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. So don't have no fellowship with the blankness, with the, with the sin uh, uh, and the death and the lack of understanding. Don't, 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 don't operate with people who don't understand. And you know what's so fun, funny about people that have, that don't have any real understanding uh, in the word of God or any understanding in anything of even probably life itself. The, the, the people that really lack understanding, you can tell the ones that don't really lack no understanding. I mean, the ones that really lack understanding, that means they don't have it, is they always trying to prove to you how much they understand. <laughs> Somebody just laughed though that I felt your spirit. They always, <laughs> they always trying to prove to you. I ain't saying that you ask them a question and they give you advice and they sound smart. I'm talking about like you don't ask for the advice or, 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 or they, uh, you know, I'm, let's just listen to me, bro. Listen to me. I'm telling you what it is, homie. Look, y'all talking about that, but I'm going to tell you what it is. Like you can be having a conversation with somebody and it don't include them and they will chime in on that conversation and give you their opinion of it, but they will make their opinion sound like fact and make you seem like you a fool if you don't listen to what they got to say because what they got to say is so knowledgeable, it'll save the, your life. But when you listen to them, they leave you like, what the you feel what I'm saying? Okay. They always trying to prove to you what they understand. That's because they don't understand. Oh my goodness. I hope that I, I hope that just touched you like it touched me. So Paul says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful workers of darkness. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of, of, of the lack of understanding. All right. He says, but rather reprove them. That means rather reject it. And I'm going to tell you how you can reject. You don't always have to get in an argument with somebody who think they know something. You actually can listen to what they have to say. You can give them respect to listen to what they got to say. But when you walk away, you you, you ever seen the, the Men in Black movie? When they take the thing and just, psh, you better, <laughs> oh Lord, forgive me. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. You better hit that button. Because if you go home thinking about what they said, you're going to be sitting up here talking about some, huh. And Paul is saying, pull away from it. He says, reprove it. That means get away from it. He says, Watch, watch, watch. And he says, the reason why you have to re reprove it, he says, because the people of the world that lack understanding, he says, they do things that are so foolish that it's a shame to even talk about some of the things that they do. I think I'm making it up. Look at 12. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. So what he's saying is those that think they're so knowledgeable and think they got all this understanding and always trying to prove to themselves. Paul says they play smart and they want to act like they all that, especially when it comes to the word of God or the word of salvation or the word of knowledge or an enlightenment. He says what, what it is, is they want to act like they're so smart. He says, but if you, if you find out some of the things that they do in the dark, See, that was the problem with the, the scribes and the Pharisees with Jesus. Jesus came confessing the truth because he was the truth. But the scribes and the Pharisees were so busy trying to get everybody to follow them because they were keepers of the law and keepers of money and the taxes. But in the background, they were sleeping with one another, taking people's taxes, taking from them. When you read this, the story of Zacchaeus, he was a Jew, but he was a tax collector and he was rich. But how he got rich was stealing people money, making them pay more taxes than they was. If they were supposed to pay 10% in taxes, Zacchaeus was telling them they had to pay 25% and that they was behind when they really wasn't. He was stealing money from his own people and he was messing around. That's what Paul says. He says, he says, not only can you not listen to those who, who, who are who are in darkness and unfruitful, meaning they're not pro producing any fruit and they're not showing nothing good. That means they talk a good game, but they ain't living a good game. And the game that they talk, you don't even see it in their own life. My gosh, am I helping somebody here? Paul says, put away from them, reprove them. He says, because in all actuality, he says, if I do, if we do a background check on them and you find out what they got going on, 
you will be, it's a shame to even talk about it. And let me tell y'all something right now. You know, listen, it, it's it, it, even, you know, we hear this stuff in the news about even pastors and what they doing and how they doing. Paul is saying, you just got to keep yourself con content. Get, don't, 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 don't get into what everybody know for the truth, uh, uh, for, uh, for what they do. He says, learn it for yourself. Second Timothy 2.15 says, study to show thyself approve a workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. You got to get to know the word of God yourself. This is why you look at this Bible study. So you learn what the truth is. Because if you follow after any old body and any old thing and listen to what they say, and you turn around and find out what they got going on, you will really be clashed. So know it for yourself. I mean, come on, let's put it out there. Let's be transparent. I then heard so much about so many things that I do, that people say I do because I preach the gospel. They, 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 they want to, some people want to give me a background, but the truth of the matter is let's be 100. Y'all don't know what I be doing because I'm not perfect. But if what I speak is truth and I go and you go right above around uh, uh, five and, 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 and uh, let me see here. Let me go back up there. Let me go. So what he says, he says, offering sacrifice, free smell, say, fornication, uh, 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 but rather giving thanks. He said, but, but if I do what four says, four and five says, but, but uh, neither fi uh, fil filthiness, foolishness, talking, nor gestures, which are convenient, but rather giving thanks. OK, so so but if I do what five says and even what um, chapter four says, let no corrupt communication. Chapter four, verse 29 says, let no co corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but rather which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So I'm bringing that up and I'm bringing up five is because I cannot be perfect. But if I'm getting on here, not trying to act like I know everything, but I'm speaking to you the word of God, and I'm speaking to you nothing but the word of God. And it's good to your ears and your spirit. And it sounds like I'm using some sense because it ain't my sense. It's just the word of God. And it's sitting right with you. And I'm not leaving you all uneasy sounding like I'm just trying to give you my own analogy. And I'm telling you that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And, or, 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 you know, instead of, well, he's the son of God, but you got to look out. He might not be. Then you're going to be like, what? You see what I'm saying? So if I'm using the word of God, regardless of what I'm doing and what people say that I'm doing, as long as, and I'm not saying this is perfect. I'm not saying I'm, I'm not saying it's OK for me to do whatever, however, because I can't do whatever, however. But as long as I'm not feeding you what I think it's best, but I'm giving you the word of God then people can talk about what they want to talk about. And everything that I'm doing that is not right, I have to answer to God. But my daily task is to be a leading example. But what I'm saying is somebody always going to try to post some salt on somebody's name. Somebody always going to do something. Somebody going to always say that, that if I tell you some of the things that I done heard about me, even it made me cringe. But that's OK, because I just want to know where they at. What else they got to say? Because it'll never end. But my point is operate in a way where you have a knowledge and understanding. And like Paul says, you got to keep yourself away from all the foolishness because if you don't, that's my point. People that have you believing some of anything, they'll, be, they'll have you believing that Jesus Christ ain't really the son of God. They'll have you believing that your, your faith is in vain. They'll have you believing that one person is a certain type of way when they don't even know nothing about that person and neither do you. They'll have you not want to hang with that person when that person can probably be your best friend and your and your fellowship partner. They could probably be the best partner, pair partner you you got. But if you listen to any, everybody else's vainness and darkness and unfruitfulness, you will be in trouble. In other words, if sister so-and-so and brother so-and-so are always finding a way to talk about somebody, you might want to find a way to reprove them like Paul said and get away, please. Because otherwise, they'll probably have you feeling crazy and driving you crazy. All right, y'all. I'm just trying to help somebody here. I ain't trying to make it personal. We're going off the word of God and we're keeping it real. Can you hear me now? Good. Well, watch this. So, um, okay. And he says, reprove them. He says, for it is a shame to even speak of the things which are done by them in secret. That's, that's chapter 5, verse 12. Paul says, but all things that are reproved, all things that are rejected, reproved, he says, when you reject them, then what happens are, is they, the, the, everything that is reproved that is not good, when you, get, when you reject it and get away from it, it is made manifest by the light. So he says, if you if you reprove the, 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 the darkness, he says, the reproving or the rejecting of the darkness keeps you in the light and the light shines on the darkness and shows you just how foolish the darkness is. 
but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. So if you stay with the truth and you stay within the truth, not only do you reject, do, re, do you reject the foolishness, but the light that you stay in show you just how foolish the foolishness is. I might have to preach that. Come on, that just got me inside. That's what he says. He says, made manifest for the light, 13. He says, for whatsoever doeth make manifest is light. I'm going to read that for you again. 13, five, chapter 5, verse 13 says, But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doeth make manifest is light. So, so what he's saying is, stay away from the foolishness. Stay away from the darkness. Don't be a part of that. Remain in truth. Remain in light. Because if you remain in truth, you remain in light. The light will shine bright enough to show you that the foolishness that you're pulling away from is so foolishness. It's, 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 it's true foolishness because the light will will show you how foolish it is and he's saying that the light is truth and if you remain in the light not only will it expose the foolishness watch this and then he says and he says for whatsoever doeth make manifest is light so he's saying that if the light is showing you just how much foolish foolishness is Stay with me. I'm not trying to lose you. He says, if you remain in the light, and if he said, if you if you remain in the light, the light will show you exactly what the foolishness is, and it'll show you how foolish it is. He's saying that's what the light job is to do. He says, because anything that's that's right, if it shows, if what is right shows you what is wrong, then what is right has to be the truth, because that's its job. Anything that manifest light is good okay so 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 whatsoever do it make manifest is light so if the light reveals the foolishness of the darkness then the light is what it's supposed to be it operates in itself if this whole room was dark the couch is right here but if i'm in the dark i don't know but the light reveals truth the light makes manifest that there's a couch here. And if the light is is what manifests the fact that there's a couch here, then, then, then the light is good because that's what the light is supposed to do. Come on now, I don't want to lose you. I'm just trying to make it plain, trying to make it plain. All right? So he says in 14, because of that, wherefore he saith, awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead and Christ shall give thee light. So he's saying if you're in darkness, what you need is the gospel, hear it, and when you hear it arise out of what you came from, the foolishness, the wickedness, come out of that, awake, arise out of that, come towards the truth, remain in the truth, because when you come towards the light, you 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 were you were dead, you were unknown, you were you you didn't know the truth, you you had no idea, you you didn't know what was up, but now you do. So you were asleep, but you were given another chance when you heard the truth. So awake, arise, you, you no longer sleep. You're woke. You know what the truth is. You have a knowledge and understanding. And he says, and you have to arise from the dead and come to Christ because Christ is the light and he will give it unto you. Because if you're not operating according to the word of God, then you're in the darkness and you sleep. Mm, Y'all better stay with me. Y'all better stay with me. He says, wake up, sleeper. What I want you to understand is right here in verse 14, this is no scripture other than the scripture here. Paul is not quoting an Old Testament scripture or a New Testament scripture. He's making a proclamation. Paul could be maybe alluding to what uh, Job 14 and 12 says. So a man lieth down and riseth not till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake nor be raised out of their sleep. That means they're kept in darkness they're kept in slumber you know but what he's doing is he's he's letting us know that um sleep there we go because i said it before i had to get it back sleep is a metaphor for death okay and what he's saying is anytime you're not uh focused on god and his word and his will or you're not operating in the truth or and that is that even means hearing the truth and believing it you're considered somebody that's sleep that means you that means you 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 sleep from the truth. And when you in, in, in this Old Testament time, whenever you consider sleep, they used to use the, the word terminology sleep for somebody that was dead. 
it's okay. He sleepeth now. And, 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 or the sleep fell upon him, and it wasn't just, and, and he and he was no more. You know, they would use that terminology, kind of like, you know, kind of like we say, uh, 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 dang, my dude put him to sleep because he punched him in the face and knocked him clean out. So they use the word sleep for the word knockout. All right. But in this time, in Paul's time, sleep was considered death. So, so this is why he used that terminology. So he's saying, arise, awake thou that sleepest, awake thou that was once dead to the truth. You're alive from it. Now he says, arise from the dead. The reason why that's, that, now that backs it up right there. He says, arise, arise thou that, he says, awake thou that sleepest. You were dead. He says, arise from the dead. He says it right behind it. Next phrase. Arise from the dead. There's the, there's the proof right there. Because to be sleep was to consider to be dead. But now you're alive. You know the truth. What? And then he says, and, 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 and the truth is the light and come to Christ. Christ will give you the light. Then he says in 15, and when you do that, see then when you woke, watch this, when you woke and you got the truth and you know the truth, see then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. In other words, you're not asleep. You're not dumb no more. You got the truth. You know the truth. You know the, you know the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Now so help you. Amen. And so he's saying this and, 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 and he says, wake up. And, and th you know, this is what it is. And he says, and when you wake up, he says, see then that when you get the truth, you walk circumspectly. That means walk according to what you know. You know the truth. You know about love. You know about the kingdom of God. God is love. You his children. You're supposed to operate in love. Act like you operate in love. Do, don't act like it. Do operate in love because you're supposed to be about love. Speak in love. Talk in love. Deal with each other in love. You know the truth. Don't act like you don't know the truth. Act like you know the truth. Do do the truth and, 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 and live like you got the truth and make sure you walk circumspectively. That's what circ circumspectly means. Make sure you do what you know you're supposed to be doing. All right. And he says, and so and, and, and when you do that, don't walk around like you a fool, like you don't know what's going on. What did he say? Do again. I, I heard Bible study in the, in the Bible and the, and, the, and the pastor told me to love. But how you do that again? Who's my representation for that again? You know what it is. Don't act like a fool. He says, but be wise. Amen. I'm gonna stop right there. Uh, verse 15, five and 15 is where I stop. Next week, I'll do uh, 16 uh, through however far I can get. I don't like to give a number because, you know, I talk a lot. Yeah. Amen. And so we thank you very much. Thank you for sticking with me. I hope that fed you tonight. Um, uh, click like and share this video. Tell somebody to tell somebody. To tell. Somebody need to hear this. Uh, amen. And, 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 and let us pray again. Father, we thank you for the for your word and for the edification that you have fed unto us, God. We thank you for the representation uh, of your word. For your word says that man shall not live by the bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God touched the mind, the bodies, and the spirits of everyone that is listening uh, to this to this video. Uh, God into this Bible study, uh, have them click like and share, uh, not for the popularity, but because somebody needs to be fed. Somebody needs to hear this and somebody needs to hear it, uh, 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 I guess, from my mouth. Uh, I don't mean to say that in a cocky way, God, but I'm just saying we have different pastors for different reasons that reach different people, but we all represent in the kingdom. So I pray that, you know, that the listeners uh, share this video and, and, and click and like God so that uh, uh, it can spread amongst the nations in the name of Jesus and uh, and and, it, and it's for your will and your way only, uh, not for my popularity of any kind in the name of Jesus. And uh, and we just thank you, God. Touch every household, uh, touch every relationship, touch every ministry, amen. Touch every gift that you have out there, Father. And you are so good and so wonderful in the name of Jesus, God. Uh, help the sisters to forgive one another. Help the brothers to get over it. Help the mothers and fathers not fall apart and help them help the relationship between their children mend back together, God. Let the families reconnect before somebody die, before COVID-19 is ever heard about, before it gets a scan. Those that are sick, heal their bodies in the name of Jesus. Hot, somebody needs to hear this in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. And may your word be, be fill up our spirits in Jesus' name. We thank you and we pray. You are so good, so wonderful, and so worthy in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen. Amen. If you want to sow a seed to Break and Chains Ministries or you want to give your tithes and offerings, you can do so at Break and Chains Ministries on Cash App. And, and uh, on Cash App, it would be dollar sign 
B-N-C-H-M, that is dollar sign, B-N-C-H-M, standing for Break and Chains Ministries. Or you can uh, mail a check or money order to P.O. Box 1227, Niles, Michigan, 49120. That is P.O. Box 1227, Niles, Michigan, 49120. Uh, and write it out to Break and Chains Ministries, not me, B-R-A-K-E. In M I N I S T R I E S, Break and Chains Ministries. Amen. And we thank you. Wonderful. We love you. Uh, pray for my strength in the Lord. Thank everybody for listening tonight. I hope this was awesome and edifying to you as it was for me. And I'm excited. Told you now, God is a good God. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.